All right, hey little buddies. Um, I'm just gonna give a quick update. Um, I'm pretty bedridden. Uh, I have pretty intense uh, gastroenteritis, some sort of stomach virus. So uh, your girl is suffering. Uh, I still really want to do Vlogmas. I'm hoping I can get through the other side of this by tomorrow. I have a doctor's appointment to see why exactly I've got it. I've got it twice now. I had it in Thanksgiving and uh, yeah, it came over me like a bag of bricks uh, yesterday. So, you know, I'm I'm feeling more stable now, stable enough to make a video. But uh, yeah, so today's vlog will be really short. But um, yeah, uh, there's not much else to say. But uh, thank you so much for like watching and. Uh, Hopefully, next vlog will be more entertaining. All right. Peace out, little buddies. Hey, actually, quick update. Um, I'm recording this a few hours after that initial half. Um, but I'm feeling really great. I'm pumped full of Pepto, uh, Gas X, uh, Sugar Free Sprite. Uh, and I've got some chicken soup down, so the girl's feeling uh, much better. I'm, I'm hoping that tomorrow I wake up pretty much recovered. So yeah, because last time it lasted about two to three days. So this is day two so far. Um, so yeah, uh, what, what's something entertaining I could talk about real quick? Uh, on Twitter, uh, there was a thread about how misunderstood The Last Jedi is. And uh, like, you know, undeniably the Holdo maneuver scene was just like iconic and like emotional. And I saw The Last Jedi in theaters and when that scene happened, it, it was like dead silent. Like it was like so moving and shocking and great cinema. Ryan Johnson is like killing it. Um, he's up there for me with like Denis Villeneuve and Yorgos Lanthimos, my favorite. Am I, am I like over like Spanishizing Yorgos Lanthimos? Yorgos Lanthimos, great guy. Watch The Lobster. Uh, so yeah, and I was just putting my two cents in about uh, how, you know, everyone hates, like not everyone, but people, who, even people who like are kind of neutral or like, sort of positive on The Last Jedi, especially now that there's been time a couple years, I guess, to like let it soak in. Even people are like, yeah, it was okay, it was fine, but that Canto Bite, those Canto Bite scenes, pointless, useless, like waste of time. And it's just really weird to me how most people seem to view Star Wars. Like they take it very literally, like very much like these characters and like they're real and uh, they take it really out of face value, I guess. and don't really see the symbolism or the themes. Because uh, I recently saw a clip of George Lucas himself saying that he literally based the resistance or the rebellion, no, the rebellion, fake Star Wars fan. Anyways, um, but he, he's saying the resistance was based on the Viet Cong and that, you know, not only was the empire based on, you know, Nazi Germany, it was based on the American empire, you know? So we love a woke king, a woke Chad. <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, but yeah, so for me, the point of the Canto bite scene is to show the true villains of the story of any war, which is an elite class that is above it all and will remain unaffected either way that sells weapons to both sides. That's the true villain. That's that's the whole point, arguably, of the movie. Like, those scenes are very important. Like, you can't cut them out. They, they were, I don't understand these people are like, it was a waste of time. Like, they don't, they really don't even understand, like, how plot works. Because even from a plot perspective, it, it, it serves a purpose. So, yeah. And then, and then I added, uh, I also was talking about that opening scene, 
Like that's how good the movie is. It's my favorite Star Wars movie. I don't I don't care. I don't care if like old Gen X weirdo dudes. I don't care if Mike Soclasa himself comes for me. I'm a Mike Soclasa fangirl. And uh from Red Letter Media, if you don't know, half in the bag, check it out. They talk about movies. Actually, you can watch half in the bag, but watch review. That's the like pinnacle of their channel. Awesome stuff. But yeah, like they're like an older generation and, and they like, of course, hated the sequels. Well, not with vitriol, but they, they had criticisms of it. Criticisms that I disagree with. But yeah, it's it's just a great movie. Like, I don't give a shit about what does it do for the intellectual property? How does it elevate the universe of Star Wars? Like, I think that's such an ass backwards way of looking at film and a sign of how fucked the movie industry is now. Um, and speaking from someone who aspires to one day hopefully produce and direct and write, you know, movies, uh, we've got to get out of this this mode of grayscale, like, oh my God, like that Zack Snyder cut where apparently getting this like four hours long of just like grim misery, like, Jesus Christ, these movies are supposed to be an escape. We need to ride the wave of Thor Ragnarok. Um, and I'll say it, I loved Avengers Endgame. I know it's Disney, I know it's it's corporate and it's hollow. Um, but I would argue that there was love put into it. And especially with the actors and what they put into it. And uh, another YouTuber, shout out to Jenny Nicholson. Love her stuff. She's an amazing, like, writer like I don't know if when she records she does it off the cuff but she has just the most insightful points that I've ever seen like give her my the My Little Pony franchise like she has a video about what she would do with it and like just give it to her she's amazing um if she wants it but uh yeah even she uh, criticized that girl power scene uh in Endgame which, yes, it was not as strong as it could be, but to me it was a turning point and a big signal of what's in store for the next stuff. Um, I love uh, Taika Watiti. I am so looking forward to Thor, I think it's called Love and Thunder. Oh, like they're getting good directors on this stuff and I'm very excited about that. Um, I don't know, sue me, I'm happy about cape shit stuff <laughs> but uh yeah for me for example that scene in endgame the girl power scene uh maybe i'll put some kind of clip here hi i'm peter parker hey peter parker you got something for me <sighs> i don't know how you're gonna get through all that don't worry she's got help scene to me it was uh it was it was cool like I fell for it I guess like to me it it like I said it's a signpost it's a okay we realize we weren't giving enough service to these amazing female characters and I mean we're getting a Black Widow movie not a big Scar jo fan wow what a mess but she is a great actress and I love the character of Natasha uh, I think we're getting more Captain Marvel. Love the Captain Marvel movie. Again, so the fanboy problem, the fanboy question, we need to address it soon because they are trying to ruin every every genre of fantasy, sci-fi, superhero. The fanboy contingency is like, they're just impossible to please and they're going to just like, just totally tank this stuff for us. So... We as women, the original originators of modern sci-fi, hello Mary Shelley, uh, 
and also like novels like were popular with women like in the 17th 16th century I think yeah about the time of the printing press like and into like the 18th century the 1700s uh, like Belle, who's always lost in her novels and Beauty and the Beast, you know, women were the ones who were consuming novels. Novels were seen as novel, new, a uh, passing phase, uh, sort of, oh, you want to read about, you know, some trite little story that, you know, doesn't have all these heady topics, I guess. These, it's not a tract, it's not an essay. But, you know, I think we as women need to take fandoms back, I guess. And I think we will and we are so, you know, and it's not about shitting on men either. Like, and, you know, a lot of the fanboys give male fans in general a bad name. So, you know, if everyone would just chill out and just enjoy a fun movie, I would love to. And color. Can we please put color back in movies? Oh, my God. Like, I mean, the new uh, Suicide Squad looks a bit desaturated. It's fine. That's That makes more sense for that. It's a grittier story. But I got to say, I prefer my Birds of Prey, Harley, colorful and lively. This red and black is like, okay, like, sure. She looks great. I'm just a little, like, very sensitive to how the, uh, a different director and I think writer or maybe it's the same. I don't think it is, but I'm curious to see how they treat her. I hope they keep that momentum of what she built in Birds of Prey. Another really great movie. So yeah, um, I just want to say it's okay to love movies. It's okay to love blockbuster, silly movies. And uh, yeah, fuck gastroenteritis. See ya. <laughs>